Andy at my creative kingdom and over there is my cat Daniel who um, might make an appearance today because he's very very needy. Um, so today I thought I'd tell you a little bit more about what I've been working on and it's been taking up about 95% of my time. So other than the little 5% for sleep or maybe even a little 1% in there to eat while I'm working or cleaning up. And so I've really been working very, very hard knowing that in this blended learning model that kids are not only going to need to know how to navigate that technology, right, but they're going to have to know how to use it. And it's a very print rich environment. So when we're looking at early learners like kindergarten, which is what I teach, it's a lot of steps to get to one place. And so the platform that our district has adopted is Teams, Microsoft Teams. And it is looking like it will be expected that all kids access their learning through Teams, which is um, great for parents who maybe use it in the workforce, um, but maybe not so great when you're looking at families who don't use it um, and when you're looking at kids being independent. So it looks like we are starting the school year with distance learning. We are a community divided, that's for sure. We've got some schools um, or districts that are starting in person. We've got some districts who, is, who are starting distance. We've got some doing uh, blended learning model and so it's a very divided community right now. Um, our health department has uh, suggested that we start with distance learning and then slowly add back kids um, who are the most vulnerable which would be starting with kindergarten. So actually yesterday I was in my classroom trying to move everything out of my classroom. That's a whole nother story. Um, everything except the district furniture, which is pretty much everything in my classroom. <laughs> so um, not everything, but a lot of it. So some of the things that I've been working on as I was starting to really dig deep into this, because I really think that this is an extremely tall task for kids, and it might not be completely developmentally appropriate to have kids accessing teams independently. That being said, there's also a necessity for kids to be able to learn how to do this, especially for families who will not be able to be there to help them. So how do I make something that is not necessarily developmentally appropriate in a platform like Teams um, and have my kids access that content that they really need? So um, I started with the basics, like how do you open and close a computer and what do you do to take care of it? And then I walked kids through step by step on how to access Teams, how to access an app, what is a computer, what is technology, really building a lot of those vocabulary terms and the background, right? What is a cursor? Because we can call it an arrow along with what the actual term is, but if kids only learn how to re uh, refer to it as an arrow later in life, they might not be able to follow tutorials as well, and I think this is actually coming back to really haunt our older kids right now. Uh, my daughter is in high school, and there's a lot of terms and technology terms that she doesn't know, so if she's watching a tutorial video on how to do something, she's not entirely sure how to make it work because she doesn't know what the actual terms are. So I think it's important that we try to front load that as much as possible. If we're going to teach it, we can use it in tandem with the actual technology term. That being said, there is so much for early learners to learn inside of technology itself, which really should be its own classroom. That is still my push. It should be an entirely independent class uh, from school, not library. Um, that being said, it's still, you have to pick and choose what, if you like my cat's foot right there? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You have to pick and choose what is the most important thing that kids get from this, right? And right now, the most important thing is that my kids know what I'm asking them to do when I'm asking them to do it. So if I'm asking them to use the cursor arrow, that's how I would probably put both of them together, to go click something, they have to know what click is. They have to know how click is different than tap, if it's a touch screen. They have to know what the cursor is to do it. So, 
he just doesn't, he's tired of me working, I think. I think all my pets and my family and my household, come here. Come here. <laughs> you don't have to deal with this at all, I'm sure. Well, if you don't have pets, maybe not, but, you know, there's always something, right? So, um, we really have to pick and choose our battles. So, I have spent the last two plus weeks working on a technology curriculum or program grant program guide, whatever you want to call it, of eight full weeks of curriculum. I am very sorry. He's very rude, but I'm not going to go back and edit because as I've talked about in my other videos, it's real life. <laughs> so thank you for sticking around. Um, just come here. Ugh. Um, oh, I lost my train of thought. Um, so some of the other things that kids need to learn um, is also not just how to use a computer, but what's expected to take care of that computer. Maybe where it is that they're doing their work. Yes, we want to be in a quiet environment, but as you can see, there's always something there that could be distracting. And so, um, as you see back here, this is actually something that I created. As you saw before, I actually created a classroom in my attic, but my attic I don't think is very well insulated. So as we're hitting 100 degree weather, 90 and 80, it gets very, very hot up there. So this is actually in my bedroom. <laughs> so um, I got myself a magnetic whiteboard. It was about $130 on Amazon. Um, I got this little lamp. Uh, set for two was $60, but what I like about it is it has USB ports and it has a plug on it and it's tap to turn it on. And then I got some little signs, of course, you know, from Michael's. I think they were on sale for about $3. So, um, and then these clips I got at the dollar store, um, a set of six, and so I thought I would just put some schedule cards up here. Although I plan on using technology a lot with my kids in the background, um, I do think it's nice that when we're not looking at the screen, they see something physical to look at. And right now, we're not sure if teachers will be required to go into the building or not. And honestly, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I would prefer to be in my classroom. I would prefer to see my kids. But I am one of those people who has asthma. I pick up everything. And so I know at some point, um, I'll probably get sick, which is fine, but I, I want to be cautious and I want to be careful. So I'm just trying to be wise and prudent at the same time as I know our families are. We want to make sure that we're getting everything we need for our kids. So um, I am working really hard to make that work for both our teachers as I was looking at the technology as well as my students and also being um, careful and balanced and I don't know about you but I don't know if there's a right decision so going back to the technology piece for kindergarten they need to know how to open and close a computer they need to know how to use it such as do you wash your hands beforehand how do you close a computer how do you log off what is the difference between logging off and putting your computer to sleep how do you log in so our district uses clever and so we have little scan badges that we can give kids um, to log into their computer and get to Clever. What is the best way to get to Teams? What is the best way to see your teacher? How do you get to your Teams meetings? How do you get to assignments? How do you submit assignments? How do you record your voice? How do you record video? There is so much involved in those things. You know what, it's really easy for adults to say, oh, that's so easy to do, it's so easy to figure out. But one, I don't know if parents are going to be able to be there to help them out. I'm going to be teaching while my daughter is in school. And yes, she is in high school, but still, she still requires help. So, um, you know, we're expecting a lot of parents. So know that from a teacher's standpoint, this is my my gift to try at least to help your kids be somewhat independent so you're not hearing mom 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 or teacher 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 if you're in a blended learning environment so if you're interested in finding more about what that looks like i have a pre-order in place the full entire curriculum will be available august 15th and you can check that out by using the link below um, it's very extensive i've got 40 games that I'm putting in there, which are basically quiz checks at the end that are kindergarten friendly, that have pictures and audio. You don't need PowerPoint. You don't need any special anything because it's on a website. Um, so the only thing kids need to do then though is save the badge that they can earn at the end, which is completely optional. They could just tell you that they did it. 
it's up to you on how you want to manage that. You have certificates you can give kids. There are 40 lessons. There's a video for every single lesson. I'm in the process of also um, creating some videos for teachers. There might be only a couple when the product comes into place, but every time I offer or create a tutorial video, it'll go to the playlist that is automatically linked to the PDF. Um, there's hundreds, I swear, well not hundreds, but there are several templates. The document right now as it is is a little bit over 200 pages and that might fluctuate. There's also parent letters that you can send out. There's the entire document, the teacher guide that is in one PDF so that all you have to do is click on the tabs to get to where you need but you also have the individual documents so let's say you want to assign a piece of paper a PDF in Classroom Teams or another uh, platform or you want to email it to parents you can do that. You can click and drag it over to your email. So there are several resources in there and I have spent hours um, of time working on it. It's about 150 plus hours that I've worked on this. So um, again, we're asking our kids to do a lot, but that being said, I also know that um, we have to do the best we can to bridge that gap. And so we have to pick and choose uh, yes, we know it might not be completely developmentally appropriate, but I also want my kids to be able to have access to learning. And so I'm willing to spend some of that academic time in the beginning teaching kids how to be the most independent they can be so that parents have a little bit less stress on their plate. And hopefully I will build a learning community with my classroom. And so, um, what we're asking our kids to do, what we're asking families and parents and teachers and nurses and doctors and everybody is no, it's not appropriate, but it's a necessity at this time. And so I'm just trying to do the best with what I have, knowing what is out there. So um, again, not getting political, just we have at some point, we just have to accept that this is the way that it is. And for right now, um, I hope it changes, but for right now, this is how I plan on helping my kids. And so that's what I try to focus on because yesterday, trust me, I did have my rant. I definitely had my rant because going into a classroom and seeing the desks laid out and it was, it was an, more than an adjustment. It was, it was a struggle. Um, so you're not alone. I hope that you're doing well and I hope this helped you out a little bit. Again, if you're interested in finding that technology tutorial, you can find it by using the link below. There's a pre-order in place that'll be available August 15th and I do recommend you could use it K2 because there are things you're going to want to review and there are things that you're going to want to reteach from year to year. Oh, I also forgot there's also digital citizenship lessons included inside there that are embedded. Um, they do not belong to me, but they are how to use the lessons that are guides from uh, really great companies like NetSmart, which is um, from the missingkids.org. Um, and then the other one is from Common Sense Media and how to provide balance in technology. And there are three lessons. They're embedded in there just with links. Um, I didn't copy or infringe on any of their copyright, but they're in there as part of the weekly lessons so that we know that, you know, these are an important part of teaching kids about technology and using it safely. So I will talk to you soon. I hope this finds you well. I need to go back and keep working hard, um, as I'm sure we've all been doing. I hope you're getting a restful summer, and please let me know what you'd like to hear from me. Um, what vlog you would like to see, I'm going to continue building these on lesson plans. You can contact me on my website at mycreativekingdom.com and I'm also in the process of setting up a kids website um, that is not up and running but will be hopefully semi-operational at least for the games when that technology piece comes out. So I will talk to you later. Have a good day. All right, bye-bye.